So we are in the Amrut Anubhav, chapter 8. Chapter 8, isn't it? Yeah, I was 8. Chapter 8. 799. 9, 9, 2, isn't it? What is it? Chapter 8, verse number 8. Page number 799. Okay. So, this whole chapter is about Jivan Mukta, uh, the, the yes. person who is realized while living and how does he function in this world. And in the 8th verse he says, Sevanti pana baheri na nigatansi pari pati sahasravari upalavize the thousand petals of seventy flower keep the oneness of the flower unaffected. Seventy is chrysanthemum flower. Uh, so in that chrysanthemum flower, have you seen chrysanthemum flowers? Mm -hmm. the hundreds and so many small ones are and it's beautiful. It comes in different colors. Is, is a very fragrant flower with a thousand petals. Its fragrance announces its presence. When the flower blossoms slowly, and the thousands of petals open, can we say that there are one thousand flowers and one thousand fragrances? No. The flower continues to be one only. In the same way, I, the pure consciousness, is manifesting in many ways. Just like the bud opens up, the petals come out, but the flower is one. Exactly the same way, when you wake up <laughs> and your mind opens up, there are many thoughts, there are many objects, but actually, it is one. So, Swamiji says, mm -hmm. in the same way, I, the pure consciousness, is manifesting in many ways. As the experiencer experienced experience, trio from a million points, in a millions of ways, in millions of sequences, but the I is one without a second. The Jivat Mukta Purusha, is firmly rooted in this experience. So this one, just like ocean, is expressing as many ways, but it is one ocean. Similarly, that one reality is expressing as this entire, but it's only one. Gold is expressing as many ornaments, but it is only one. Mud is expressing as many parts, but it is only one. Similarly, you are expressing as many, but actually you are one. This is at individual level, total level. The Paramatma is alone expressing or Ishwara alone is expressing as all, but actually it is one. But the per but we perceive it as many. And uh, the, the, the fault is not in the Lord. Fault is in our perception. So correct your perception. And how do you correct your perception? Change your vision, 
How do you change your vision, change your notions, change your convictions? How do you change your conviction? Pray to the Lord. <laughs> or co contemplate who, who, what is this consciousness? And that way, automatically, the one who lives in this grand vision of oneness uh, is a Jivan Mukta Purusha. This is explained further. Taise nava nava anubhavi vazata vadhavi akriye chyagavi ne nizete. In the same way, the multiplicity of new experiences does not create any difference in the unactive pure self. In the same way, there is different. There is a different new experience every moment. Although multiplicity of different and new experiences are gathered, no difference is created in the non-active pure self. Why non-active pure self? Why non-active pure self? Ah, correct. It doesn't have to do anything. It is everything. Therefore, unactive. Not inactive. Unactive. Every little experience is the manifestation of the same Paramatma Tattva. And this is my essential nature. What previously was told, the trio, seer, seen, seeing, hearer, heard, <coughs> hearing, experiencer, experienced, experiencing, knower, known, knowing. Walker, walk, uh, no, what? A smeller, smell, smelling. Thinker, thought, thinking. Without this trio, a thought cannot appear in your mind. Whatever you are thinking, this, the trio have to be there. See? And they are coming and going every moment. Even while you are listening right now. With every word that is coming and forming a thought in your mind, it's coming through your ears and forming a thought in your mind. A trio is uh, created. Right now you are he a hearer. I am the herd. The words are the herd. Uh, and the equipment is the ears. See. Then you are seeing also, seer, seen, seeing, uh, going on. So continuously these three are coming and going. But that does not corrupt you. You do not become less. You do not become more. You are as you are. Recognizing this phenomena taking place and not getting caught up by this phenomena is how a realized master lives in this world. Every little experience is the manifestation of the same Paramatma Tattva and that is my essential nature. This is the experience of the Jivan Mukta Purusha. Every little experience, these trios that are coming and going, this entire experience that I am having is not other than the infinite reality that I am. So just as in a dream, the space, air, fire, water, earth, people, rivers, mountains, gardens, houses, children, wives, husbands, relations, everything is born out of what? Born out of you only, isn't it? It is not coming from outside and entering into your mind. Mind alone is becoming everything. Exactly the same way in the waking plane also, mind alone is becoming everything and the knower ever remains the same. So now, which knower? This pure self. On the pure self, this entire world of change is what is happening. Another word? is superimposed. Actually, it is all water. Waves are superimposed on it. Individuality, oceans are superimposed on it, totality. Exactly the same way, 
even though we call it ocean or wave but actually it is nothing but water water is unaffected same way this to yourself is unaffected but as an individual because we are thinking we say uh, there is a world and that world is a superimposition on the reality now that does not mean if this is the world and you may you don't start thinking this is the world and this is reality and it has been pasted on it or superimposed on it no everything is reality just like water is everywhere on the water itself you are imagining a wave and an ocean isn't it that wave and ocean is not other than water exactly the same way this entire world of ch uh, change this entire world of multiplicity this entire world of time space and objectivity this entire world of micro at the micro level or macro level the entire world of the triads the seer seen seeing here or heard hearing everything is superimposed on the reality the pure self what actually is there is pure self but what are we seeing we are seeing human beings we are seeing the sofas we are seeing the houses our we are obsessed with form we are unable to suss out the essence but who is a jivan mukta purusha he has perfected himself and even though his senses are seeing mind is thinking but he is never separated or has never forgotten or ever established in his essential nature which is all inclusive actually speaking from pure self point of view there is no all inclusiveness it just is we are because we are caught up we are saying it is all inclusivity we are saying to the waters oh all, water is all inclusive of all the oceans and all the waves but for ask water is he, he doesn't know what these two are isn't it like that contemplate although there is so much of activity as far as the jivan mukta is concerned in a state of actionlessness mm -hmm. although there is multiplicity there is no manyness when the attention is on the consciousness all other differences cease to have any meaning he who has arrived at the pure consciousness that i is does not have any insistence on any account either raga or dvesha no likes and dislikes this will be no there will be no more ashak asakti for or against anyone asakti means attachment attachment for someone or attachment for not being with someone or not being with something uh, no attachment with space time and objects in bhagavat also yesterday we saw the same thing the lord vasudev the father of krishna he asked the saints and sages sir please tell me what is to be done to be free of actions and the impressions born thereof due to performing the actions because that is keeping us keeping me in the loop of birth after birth after birth how do i become free of this and all the sages are thinking why is he asking us he has got the lord as his son the life of all the saints and sages became fulfilled in that particular instance when their eyes fell on lord krishna because thousands and thousands of years they have meditated contemplated upon that parmatma on that pure self and that pure self has manifested as lord krishna in their life and they recognize that that he is the lord that he is the parmatma that he is the transcendental principle by his own free will he has appeared on the plan, on the earth to bless us to remove the evil to bless the good to reestablish the dharma and they are thrilled but the father he doesn't know that his son is <laughs> <laughs> the paramatma how do we do the how do but when he sees that these saints and sages are praying to him 
he asked them i also want that vision it must be going on in his mind please tell me how do i cleanse myself of all uh, this insistence that I, only when i do something i can be uh, uh, purified so please purify me of this doing purify me of the karma and the karma vasana so they said only one thing just like here that is for they said with love remember the lord surrender to the lord that's all everything will happen but we think we have to do something in this world in order to achieve something that is how we have pr programmed ourselves if at all okay if at all you are so uh, much addicted and insisting that you must do something then rather than do something in this outside world do in the inner world what do you do remember the lord with love and automatically the purification will happen and it doesn't take too long but you must do it with full intention and faith same thing is being told here in a different language that how do you purify yourself how do you change your vision contemplate on what is this consciousness who is conscious of all this i am who is this i be sincere not at a superficial level dive deep they say i am that but how what does it mean keep keep at it keep at it once a guru maharaj was sitting on the bank of the ganges idly playing with sand his disciple was watching him the guru asked what do you see the disciple said i see sand in your hands the master replied when you see parmatma in the sand then you are somewhere near the truth <laughs> he sees sand in the hand of the guru master guru maharaj he says when you see parmatma the infinite reality in the sand then you are somewhere close to the reality meaning whatever you are seeing hearing touching feeling tasting thinking everything everything is pervaded when your vision is that everything is not other than the self just like now you know that other than water nothing else is in the ocean and waves isn't it now the vision has changed <laughs> you cannot you may call it ocean but you know it is nothing but water you can you know this chest of drawers and uh, sofas and everything you know it is made up of <coughs> calling it chest of drawers with drawers with this big drawer small drawer big uh, horizontal vertical uh, flat surface but everything is wood only your attention is on wood so when we are seeing the world is your attention on the name and form or is your attention on the truth which in the outside world is appear expressing as existence where outside it is appearing as existence in us it is appearing as existence and knowledge the consciousness is knowledge and when you realize that this existence which is everywhere is not other than the existence that i am and this knowledge that i have that i am this existence <laughs> story over then there is anand parmanand joy then there is no insistence on anything but first and this will come only by uh, <laughs> by contemplation uh, by diving deep into that reality that we are it will not just come a superficial appreciation 
of what the various masters are writing or various scriptures are saying. Hmm? In this way, when the mind is soaked with the thought of divine presence everywhere, in everything, every moment, then alone will the mind, out of long habit, become one with the theme called truth. See? Just like a young single girl or a single man, excuse me, a bachelor, gets married and after that starts calling himself or herself husband and wife. Initially it's a little bit, you forget and you spend and then arguments at home. But if it's out of love, then the, 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 the association is continuous. Day in and day out you are associating with each other and the, the new identificate the new name that I am the husband and I am the wife that becomes stronger and stronger and stronger and whatever is uh, the, the, the job description of the husband and wife that starts expressing out of you, isn't it? Whatever that person called husband should or should not be doing that you become aware of. See? Exactly the same way. When we are continuously thinking about the reality, initially it is touch and go, touch and go. It will happen. But as the time goes by and our focus from the reality does not wane, we remain focused on it, contemplative on it without too much of uh, uh, thoughts because we know the reality is beyond thoughts <laughs> and that reality which I am seeking is not other than me. So all this fine tuning has to keep going on all the time, not only on the seat of meditation, 24 by 7 this fine tuning has to keep going on. For that alertness is required, clarity is required. And uh, uh, such a person who stays with this theme, stays with this uh, consciousness for a long period of time, automatically his vision uh, changes for the better. This is the sadhana of Mahatmas like Ramad Maharishi practiced. He refused to accept anything other than Paramapurna Sat. This abhyasa is not mere verbalization. The thought must be brought out from oneself again and again. It is, as I said just now, it is not about just superficially understanding it. It must, if everything is done, what does it mean? No question will be ever, what does it mean? I keep asking the question, tell me this, tell me that. Nobody's answer is ever going to satisfy me <laughs> because the outside answer is never <laughs> is never the answer. The, the, the settlement of this question once and for all has to happen from within. Yes, questions do appear, no, no doubt, but the, 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 the solution to it is also within only. It's not outside. I can go from teacher to teacher, book to book, lecture to lecture, nothing is going to happen. Answer has to come from within. So, as long as you think you are an individual or you think you are a seeker and you think you have to do some sadhana, a practice, then what is the practice? practice? This is the practice. Bring the thought out of your bosom that the existence that, that I am and the existence that this entire world is, is one and the same. The truth that I am is the truth which is pervading, permeating the entire world. 
then why am I not able to see it? Keep contemplating. And the answer will not be in the names and forms. It will not be in the names and forms. The answer will not be in an experience. You can have an experience of name and form, but reality is not an experience. Experience is always objective in nature. Reality is not an objective experience. It is abidance. It is experienceless experience. In this way, the Jivan Mukta is very much participating in the world, but his Nirvikalpa Samadhi is never broken. He is eloquently moving in this world, but his Mauna silence is never destroyed. What is this Mauna silence? What is this Nirvikalpa Samadhi? It is his inner poise. That poise is never destroyed. This is what when I travel with Swamiji, this is what I see. He is ever in that poise. And that's what I'm trying to access. <laughs> I make myself available to it. it. It will not come from him to me. But I see from what space is he functioning ever in that poise. Whether he is eating, whether he is uh, meditating, whether he is giving a lecture, whether he is laughing. But you can see that all this is just happening in the outside. He is ever established. See? <clears throat> now how is he able to achieve this? This is explained in the next two OVs. Manauni Vishaya Seni Nave Suni Indriyanze Thave Sendh Sendh Gheti Gha Dhave Samorahi He says Therefore the senses of the of a jivan mukta also run towards the object, the indriyas, the senses of the realized master, the jivan mukta purusha, also run towards the object in the same way as in the case of others. The eyes see the colors and forms, the ears hear the sound. So a realized master's senses will not become withdrawn. They are also seeing the world, but there is a difference. It will tell now what what the difference. I have already said it, but let's see. Then what is the difference between a Jeevan Mukta and an ordinary person? What is the difference between a realized master if he is, his senses are also extrovert and our senses are ex also extrovert? Then where is the difference between him and me? I have come across so many masters. They are also seeing, they are also eating, they are also t taking bath, they also sleep, they also wake up. <laughs> then why they are called uh, realized masters and we are called the fools? <laughs> The answer here he says Pari Arisa did he shive Tava did he see did he pug Fave Tai says Hale Dhave Vritti Seya Just as the eyes see the mirror and discover themselves in the mirror, so also the thought discovers its own being in the objects. How beautiful! Just like when you look into the mirror, you see yourself, you discover yourself. Every moment, you are not looking at anything else in the mirror. The moment you stand in the mirror, in front of the mirror, you see yourself and you say, oh, how beautiful I am. <laughs> A realized master moving around in the world, when his eyes see anything, he is seeing himself. When he hears something, he is hearing himself. How beautiful. Just like once I told you, you know, when Mahatma was studying the Bhagavad Gita and chanting, Dharma Kshetre Kuru Kshetre Samaveta Yudhava Mamaka Vandava Shaiva Kimukurvata Sanjaya and going on and on. And some students were watching. Why is this master continuously reading Bhagavad Gita like this? He knows everything. Why is he reading again and again and again? So they asked, 
Sir, why are you reading Bhagavad Gita? He said, I'm just checking if it is uh, what it is talking about me. <laughs> I'm just checking what it is talking about me. So when we are able to suss the self in everyone who is expressing, you don't see them as separate. the differences start melting away then. So just like even though there is a mirror in between you and your reflection, but your attention is not on the mirror, even though it is on the mirror, but your focus is on the reflection and that reflection is of yours. So when someone says something, thinks something, scolds, loves, etc., etc., <coughs> are you seeing it as your reflection or are you straight away judging away and uh, condemning them and, uh, you know, uh, shoo, I don't want to talk to you for the rest of my life. <laughs> Do you say that to yourself when you see in the mirror? Oh my God, what has happened? My hair, hair has vanished <coughs> from my head. I don't want to see this face for the rest of my life. <laughs> Do you say that? Whichever way it is, you love it, isn't it? Because that's you. So here, when one looks at the reflection in the mirror, the knowledge is about the seer, oneself. The seer and seen are one. So the seer and the seen, the reflection is so this, of the seer only, isn't it? Of the face only. So rather than seeing the differences, the Jivan Mukta Purusha, his eyes are open, he is also seeing, you are also seeing, you are seeing everything as separate, as a challenge, as a competition, as a comparison, as a, a something to like or something to dislike. This is how we look at everything. But a Jivan Mukta Purusha, when he looks at, he is also looking, but how is he looking? As if he is looking at himself. Is that the last step? It is the first and the last step. First and the last, yeah. This doesn't happen as a practice. This happens as a transformation within. It's not a, it's not a doing. It's not a doing. You don't do anything when you're standing in front of the mirror. <laughs> Automatically the reflection appears. In the same way, when the Jivan Mukta comes in contact with the world, his experience is that whatever he sees, hears, touches, etc., is none other than I himself. For him, the seer and the seen are both objects of knowledge. In this vision, the subject-object duality has equal value from every point. And this is, has happened because of his expanded consciousness, which includes all the subjects and all the objects. How? Just like in the dream. All the people in the dream, they are the subjects and they have certain objects which they are perceiving, isn't it? But all of that, is it not the mind? <laughs> Think in the dream. And all that is known by someone. The entire dream is known by someone, the dreamer. And this you can come to know when you wake up, isn't it? That all the subjects and objects, every thought, every seer seen, every hearer heard, every knower known, every experiencer experienced, not only of the dreamer, but every person in the dream. was not other than I. <laughs> but this happens when? When you wake up. In the dream you are not able to work it, work it out. But the moment you wake up, you work it out and be because you work it out it was all me, it is not worth to keep it as a memory, a discard. <laughs> because everything is me alone. <laughs> exactly. 
exactly the same way. In the waking plane, if right now, rather than keep insisting that the world is separate, that I am a part of this world, that I was born in this world and this world is very difficult and one day I will go away from this world. Oh my God, I need to, I don't know what will happen, this, that. Instead of these thoughts, keep insisting, what? This, if you are used to insistence, insist this, that the world has come out of my mind, just like in the dream. Every person, every experiencer, every experience is not other than the self. Oh Lord, please reveal it to me. Don't keep saying every experience is me. Experience. Nothing is going to happen. You have to invoke the higher. You have to come back to the conscious principle. By looking at matter, you cannot work out the, uh, the conscious principle. By looking at matter, it will not come. Because matter has its own uh, shortcomings. Matter is inert. And therefore it cannot give you the answer. You have to seek. You are the answer, you are the question. <laughs> you are the question, you are the answer. So if you seek anyone else, from anything or anyone or any book, forget it. You don't want to take responsibility. That's all there is. And if you do take the responsibility, what is the responsibility? Fall in love with yourself. <laughs> the true self. Fall in love with it. Allow it to reveal. And understand that falling in love with the self means if it is equal to falling in love with the whole, with everything that there is. I am in love with myself, but I am not in love with the world. Then another caricature will be created. You will be more disturbed after some time. So what is Nirvikalpa Samadhi? Nirvikalpa Samadhi is a state of mind where the mind has completely got absorbed. It is in silence. Isn't it? And what Swamiji is telling here, who is a Jivan Mukta Purusha, who is moving around in the world, maintaining this silence in the within himself. Maintaining this silence. How is this silence being maintained? Seeing is happening, but the seer is not allowed to be born. Hearing is happening, but the hearer is not born. As a result, what is taking place? The thoughts are not appearing on the mind. A for a thought to appear, seer, seen, seen. The three have to come in order for a thought to be formed. But in Jivan Mukta Purusha, what is taking place? Seeing is taking place, but no thought is thought of the what the, the, the seer, seen, seen as one unit which appear as a thought in the mind. That is not happening. Why? The mind is silent. He has recognized nothing is other than me. When nothing is other than me, it has clicked in the deep depth of his bosom. If the thought can be always only of the other. See? And he has come to know that there is no other. Everything is the self alone. For, for him, the seer and the seen are both objects of knowledge. In his vision, the subject-object <coughs> duality has equal value from every point. So the Jivan Mukta has his firm experience that whatever he sees from both the seer and the seen point of view, he, the I alone, is the reality and therefore they are so compassionate, they are so empathetic. Because at a moment's notice, they can take your position and they can see how, what is your standpoint. <laughs> they don't insist, my standpoint is the only standpoint. Because he's got no standpoint, he's everywhere. <laughs> so, 
so even though you see him to be sitting in uh, one place or walking somewhere else but his at a he can take that great master he can take any position so if someone comes straight away what what angle that person is coming from what intention that person is coming from what thoughts are they coming from everything is known and then he does not address the uh, the question he doesn't address the question he addresses the person <laughs> because he is him only he has <clears throat> therefore the jivan mukta is the one who has total control over the experienced and the experiencer he is not under their sway we are under the sway of the experiencer sometimes the experience takes the position of seer seeing hearer hearer not seer seen seer hearer taster thinker jealouser envier insister father mother it keeps taking the erring it keeps erring and sometimes he takes the position gets identified with something some object and uh, loses his whole, the whole plot jivan mukta purusha doesn't do that he has nothing to gain by things done or left undone he is the same towards all beings with neither hatred nor special attraction towards anything or any being meaning there is no like and dislike whenever there is a sense of otherness a subject object duality is taken as real this subject will automatically create likes and dislikes with various objects that he experiences a realized what is the difference uh, the realized master who also has a mind who also thinks like sees here touches feels like us he doesn't divide himself into a subject and an object we go around dividing ourselves i am the subject that is the object i am the subject body is the object i am the subject the, these people are the experienced isn't it and then as if that is the norm by with which you are moving around in the world then automatically i like him because he doesn't ask questions i like her because she ask many questions <laughs> i like this food i don't like that food i like this house i don't like that house i can sleep only in my bed i can't sleep in any other bed so keep big with this standpoint we keep dividing dividing the world that is automatic when you see when there is sense of otherness but in the realized master this sense of otherness is not there because his i which was first oh, considering itself only to be the body has now expanded to infinity in our words it has it now includes all the eyes past present and future so what what are the other eyes you also call yourself i you also call yourself i he also calls it. every human being on this planet calls themselves i only isn't it he has included all of them without having done anything <laughs> he just is he just is and therefore because he is in one you can say at one moment with every being and every object in this creation therefore he sees himself only everywhere he hears himself only everywhere his hunger is everyone's hunger or others people's hunger is his hunger so there is no insist on anything no likes and dislikes no comparison no competition nothing to achieve nothing to gain 
nothing to shun away, because everything is He is alone. The Jivan Mukta has thus got out of not only one trio, but all the trios and thereby is able to conquer all the three planes of consciousness. This is the totality of his vision. Then alone is the Jivan Mukta Purusha able to enter the dream state of anyone to, tra uh, uh, to transcend time and place. This is our Satya Sai Baba, Shirdi Sai Baba. So many people are able to experience them, so many different places. Because they have gone to that, because they see themselves as everywhere. Then there is no barrier to their expression. Barrier of expression is only where there is sense of otherness. I am expressing only here. You have, then you have to come to 11 Walsley Avenue to experience me. But if in my mind I have broken the barrier, then just like so many people, without having gone to Potaparthi, have experienced Baba. Without having gone to Shirdi, have experienced Shirdi Sai Baba. How come they have never gone there and that yet? The picture that they see, the experience that they have, the dream that they had, the recurring form that appears in their mind. They have never seen him, they have never read about him. How come? This is how it happens. Because you ta there's no because. There's no because. There's no difference. He is, because he is everywhere. He graces. <laughs> It's not you. You have not reached that state yet. But He is gracing us in our dreams by continuously coming and giving us the visions. In different ways He comes into our life. <coughs> and those are all just uh, ways to tickle us to wake up. <laughs> there is something more. Get out of this mundane existence. It's not about the person. And so many lives have changed, isn't it? This is how it happens. Because of the oneness that that Master is experiencing with the entire creation. And He doesn't decide that I'm going to go into his pers this person's mind or that person's mind. He is not deciding. He'll go crazy if he has to decide for so many millions of people. Because how many devotees are there of Baba? You think he knows everyone? From your where you are standing, he cannot know everyone. But from where he is standing, it cannot be any other way. Because it's the same self expressing as <laughs> <laughs> many. It's the same water expressing as many waves. Understanding what we are saying? <coughs> Then intuitively, depending directly proportional to the uh, the person, I'm talking again from relative standpoint. Depending upon you, you are thinking about something higher, something. Please, God, you know, God is everything. So he may he came into your life as Baba. In someone else's life, he came as Ammachi. In someone else's life. He came as uh, me, in my life he came as you. <laughs> so it's the self playing, the water playing with itself is called a wave, isn't it? Similarly, the reality or the playing with itself is called the creation. <laughs> Change the angle of looking at the whole thing. It's a joy. Change this angle rather than arguing, fighting, complaining, seeking, expecting. All this will only lead to irritation and depression, nothing else. This has happened for so many, in your life also, throughout it is happening. What have we gained? Nothing we have gained out of all this. Let's try something else. Let's be different.
What is that difference? Let's be one. <laughs> Without a second, try that. And uh, imagine, uh, not imagine, uh, initially imagine, right now we are only thinking uh, that, that everything is nothing but that one that I am. Just listening about it, it's so fantastic. So how much it will be uh, when we are abiding in it, in that, in that experienceless experience? This is the totality of his vision. Then alone is the Jivan Mukta Purusha able to enter the dream state of anyone to transcend time and place. So for this Jivan Mukta Purusha, just like all for the dreamer, the the uh, the wake the dreamer also sees. <sighs> excuse me, the waking plane of consciousness. While he is in the dream, he sees the waker, the dreamer, the deep sleeper. These three experiences are going on in the dream, not maybe for himself, but for others in the dream. But when you wake up, you realize you are transcendental to all the wakers, dreamers and <laughs> deep sleepers. Exactly the same way it will happen when you wake up from this plane of consciousness, from this waking. How the seer and seen become one in the Jivan Mukta's vision is explained through some examples. Naga Mudi Kankana Trilingi Bhedali Khuna Gheta Tarhi Suvarna Gheizeki Although the ornaments Naga Mudi and Kankana are referred to with different genders, they are essentially gold. Just like the, the nose ring, the bracelet, the necklace, the, the, the yeah, all these different ornaments are called by different names, but essentially they are, they are gold. Similarly, the realized master may call, use the words sofa, carpet, uh, lumina, Louis, uh, uncle, so and uh, he sees the whole world. He also calls space, air, water, earth, everything he'll tell. But his experience is that of, is that of oneness. Just like at a very, very small scale, just like you call the right hand, left hand, head, eyes, nose, you call all these different parts by different names, but your experience is I. Therefore you've got no hatred, like or dislike towards any part of your body. You are not in competition with your own body. You don't hate your own body. Exactly. Imagine this to include not just one body, now it is the total, the entire cosmos. Some of the ornaments worn in earlier times were Naga, an ornament worn on the upper arm, Mudi a ring and Kankana a bangle. These ornaments were assigned different genders such as masculine for Naga, feminine for Mudi and neuter gender for Kankana. All the different ornaments are referred to differently gender wise. Essentially they are all the same, the gold. Gold includes all the three genders. Similarly, out of the Supreme I, all the three have come out, the experiencer, experienced and the experiencing, no gender. Thus, the pure consciousness that I am has no differences and differentiations. So, I am, an, I am that indivisible self, undivided self. The examples continue. Way. Vetsuna Anu Kallola Manauni Ghape Karatala Te Te Tari Nikhala Pani Seek Pave When the wave is lifted, water alone comes in the hand. A person wants to lift the wave, so, the places, so he places his palm beneath it and lifts it, and nothing but water comes in his hand. 
in the same way when the jivan mukta purusha gets his experience in this world he experiences sees nothing but himself everywhere he his experience is as given in the kaivalya upanishad in me alone everything is born in me alone everything exists and in me alone everything is dissolved i am that non dual brahman the knowledge is not opposed to duality and dualism on the contrary it is because of this pure knowledge duality and dualism are possible but the pure knowledge itself has never suffered on account of duality and dualism what do you mean sir just like the duality of day and night or the sunrise and sunset is not possible without the sun but the day and night the sunrise and the sunset they cannot corrupt the sun they cannot influence the sun they cannot trap the sun but without the sun they cannot express isn't it do they express independently not possible if the sun is not there there will be no day and night there will be no sunrise and sunset but from sun's point of view there is no day and night there is no sunrise and sunset from individual point of view there is sunrise and sunset and there is day and night so this shift in vision as an individual point of view there is sense of otherness there is experience and experienced there is knower and known there is duality there is dualism there is opposites but from the uh, self point of view non dual view point if it is can be called a view point from water's view point or the sun's view point there is no duality possible i alone am i am giving uh, the opportunity for the sunrise and the sunset to happen sun cannot say that <laughs> he cannot say that it is out of his imagination it just cannot think like that because his nature is light he can never see darkness he is fixed he has never gone down or gone up <laughs> so he can never experience sunrise and sunset as beautiful as it may be exactly the same way all sunrise and sunsets are supported by the sun but the sun is transcendental unaffected uncorrupted by any of those Uh, yeah, sunrise and sunset, or days and nights. It is independent, transcendental experience, who supports everything but is not affected by anything. Just like water supports all the waves but is not affected by any wave. Similarly, right now, who is supporting the whole creation? just like in the dream who are supporting the whole dream creation you were when did you realize that when you woke up <laughs> and you give zero value to it afterwards to the dream you don't want to go back into it because it was a figment of imagination exactly the same way in this waking plane of consciousness who is supporting this entire world rather than giving importance oh she is Uh, such so sincere or this and that no our attention should be on the self who is giving reality to this real to this whole world i am be focused on the i that is the sub i is the substratum this i alone is expressing as gross subtle and causal this i alone is the creator maintainer and destroyer and the more, more we focus on this i the possibility of waking up from this waking dream uh, will be will be there you keep thinking about the world waking will never take place like all the ways ha ah, here 
the knowledge is not opposed to duality and dualism on the contrary it is because of this pure knowledge duality and dualism are possible but the pure knowledge itself has never suffered on account of the duality and dualism this is what i was explaining just now this knowledge is not to be understood truth is beyond understanding understanding means conceptualization which can only result in misunderstanding so when we are reading these texts commentaries if we are not subjective in nature then it just becomes information and when information is collected because it is not giving taking you to that transcendental all inclusive principle because you are just listening to it collecting information then questions appear because it has not gelled you are still looking at the whole information objectively whereas the information that was the words that were falling on your ears were to prompt you while listening to be that one on all inclusive self while listening so you are you are aware that the thoughts are coming but what they are indicating you should be that not afterwards while listening and when that is not done and just the 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 elegance of the words the floweriness of the words the the depth of the words our attention is on all those things we are still objective in our approach our approach should be these words remain equanimous towards the words stay allow every word to come in but what is it indicating i is not an information the i is all inclusive this is not an information this should be our subjective experience because the word i came you are looking at as a information i includes everything what does this mean no it should be we are talking about you immediate take should be i that i am is all inclusive what remain in that poise allow it to reveal itself we are not talking about a concept we are not talking about an idea so when it is taken as information there will be misunderstanding and when it is taken as information you are only at the mind level if you are taken it subjectively there cannot be any question when it is only at the mind level there will be nothing but questions because mind's job is to ask questions mind's job is to have doubts about every damn thing that it can uh, think of but you are not the mind like all the waves when lifted are only water when i tried to grasp the trio i discovered that in all the trios i alone was the reality this is within us that the seer seeing seeing was not but the reality and so on with the, with this knowledge the jivan mukta naturally loves everyone priyatva is natural all that is contrary to priyatva is superimposed when love is felt for someone in the heart it makes one feel comfortable and which is this love this is not love for another it is unconditional love in the nature is love the flower doesn't say i will i like this fellow i'll give him my fragrance no is the fragrance is universal isn't it it's free for all like that this love, love is the fragrance of love as a result of this this vision of the of as a result of this undivided vision therefore it says trayambakam yajamahe sugandhim pushti vardhanam sugandhim fragrance when you contemplate on the lord shiva the fragrance sugandhim pushti and what is this fragrance which nourishes you when you go to a flower 
the why do you go to flower either it is for the beauty but if you take it and you smell it the rose ah, but if that rose is without any fragrance you just throw it away <laughs> you want the the fragrance mm. the jasmine that is growing outside the moment the fragrance it that nourishes you so this this uh, unconditioned mind unlimited mind this all inclusive self the fragrance of, that starts emanating out of this realized master is that of unconditional love now because we are using the language unconditional love towards everyone just like the water has unconditional love towards all the waves just because a wave has appeared does not mean the wave does not wave the water has discarded that wave no in and through that it is the wave water alone he cannot leave the wave at but wave does not realize that <laughs> wave does not realize that and water also does not realize it why water does not realize it it already is It, he doesn't you can realize something if it is other than you this is not other than you so he says i am that's it <laughs> so water has unconditional love towards all the waves like that such a realized master has unconditional love towards the entire creation see this should be our disposition the moment i feel uh, the moment i remember my guru maharaj all the negativities depressions and frustrations are erased in his presence when he enters my bosom in the form of memory removal of negativities is only an effect at the vritti level at the thought level when the thoughts vrittis are discarded and i come to the substratum of the thought negativity has no more any place it is dropped totally this all inclusiveness is love wisdom knowledge this i am in this knowledge there is freedom life manifests in its own freedom in good and bad in poison and in, of the cobra or the milk of the cow in this way the jeevan mukta purusha has become one with his own essential nature for him differences on whatever account carry no meaning and he is not affected by anything because he is all that there is so when we use the word i all inclusiveness infinity this is eternity is your nature this i is eternal these are prompters and these prompters are by way of thought entering you but what they are indicating is other than the thought i is not a thought i is your your being which the mind is saying as a in the way of thought it is saying i <laughs> see so this this click must take place expose yourself again and again and again to this knowledge expose your mind to this self again and again and here when he says that whenever i think of my guru maharaj all unwanted thoughts automatically are removed from the mind so if you take charge that i have to purify the mind you are going the wrong way always invoke someone higher think of the sadguru in your heart think of the lord in your heart and it helps or if you have a teacher you think of the teacher in your heart and it helps 
the moment that teacher uh, I, thought comes or image comes, immediately all, and the love that starts pouring out of the mind, automatically everything else that was disturbing just melts away. Because the Lord, the interaction with the Lord is more uh, powerful than uh, with all other information. So in this manner, we'll continue from the 14th verse in our next class. Enjoy. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Sit quietly for a minute.